Welcome to Not Like This. Not Like This. From professional wrestling, horror films, and everything in between. Strap in. And now your hosts, Dale Zawada and Jim Snedeker Jr. Yeah, sorry about that, dog. I uh, didn't want to poop. Tied for 10 goddamn minutes. Blame it on the dog. Smokey's over here taking the shit. Hey. Smokey over here taking a shit. I love that movie. That's how he did it. That's how I remember him doing it. That movie's that movie's great, isn't it? I mean It holds up, yeah. It holds yeah. up, right? I haven't seen it in to, a minute, but I would I would have to assume it's still great. I don't think Friday's getting canceled. Cause Smokey's over here taking a shit. Can't cancel can't cancel a man taking a shit. I think more movies need scenes like that. There was a whole fucking song because of that movie. My neck, my back. My neck. Really? Yeah, that's from I the. That was oh, just, my neck. Oh, sure. My back. Oh, my neck and my back. I didn't know if it was just happenstance or oh, something like that. It's All never right, happenstance. Good. Come on. Give him, him give him the credit. It's him. Taking his shit. I still. I don't kill. That'd be great. Are we on? Yeah, we're on. Oh my goodness. We're Welcome live, pal. <laughs> we're live, pal. Oh my goodness! Uh, did you watch the big, uh, big game, big sports game? Yeah, I saw most of it. I watched most of it. Um, I uh, probably well, rough talk about it. Oh God, yeah, it was rough. If you're a fan of the Kansas City racists, the Chiefs, I forgot about that. After they got blown out, people were like, "Good." Remember when they booed like equality at their stadium like a month ago? <laughs> I oh, forgot about sense. that. Yeah, so I was like, oh, yeah, good. Fuck it seems guess. very Kansas City. And just a moment of silence for unity across the nation. We're all going through some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. We know what that really means. And it was like the first time they had people in the stadiums because it was just, you know, cardboard cutouts. And they were like, we're going to start sprinkling some people in. And like the first game for the Chiefs, boo, if it ain't white, it ain't right. Yeah, that's Missouri. It's Missouri, it baby. White. Those sons of guns. Big old halftime show. I got to see The weekend yeah. for the first time. I got, you know, kept hearing all week, oh, he likes Coke. Oh, ooh, <laughs> all this stuff. Does he? he? He promised not to make it too uh, Coked uh, up. Ris <laughs> risque or something. He was like, it'll be fine. And when I heard that, when he was, like, promising the executives, like, I'm not going to do any shenanigans. I was like, is he a troublemaker? Is he one of those guys? No, he's just like a studio pop culture, pop music guy. Yeah, I mean, he just yeah. like, he did, he did tried to do a little dancing. Didn't really do much dancing. He just kind of stood there and <laughs> then he got lost inside. He started doing a little Michael Jackson footwork thing. And I was like, all right, here we go. Show me the move. Oh, he's done. Yeah, he doesn't have those are his moves. Those are the moves. He was like it was like he was practicing skiing. He was just like French fries, pizza, French fries, pizza. Like he was just like alternating his heels. Yeah, <laughs> click them together. Yeah, it wasn't uh it wasn't really entertaining. He said that it cost him seven million dollars out of his own money to put on that halftime <laughs> show. And I heard a bunch of people their response was like, What how? Where? Seven fun million house. dollars. Doesn't just build itself the fun house. Oh Lord. Man, it Play, was he, he paid for the pyro. Oh, cool. That's you know, we're not thinking I'm, I'm making that up. We're not gonna do pyro this year. If you want it, BYOP is what up was up. We're, we're saying. Bring your own pyro. Yeah, I think he was like snubbed for every Grammy or something like that as well. And uh his well he, he's got like one of the hottest albums of the year of twenty twenty. He's like, got yeah, the WrestleMania no. hype song. He's he's the WrestleMania song this year too. Is he? Mm -hmm. Interesting. I didn't uh, I didn't see the weekend. I don't know the we. I don't know. I know too many uh, music fans that like the weekend. For that to be a WrestleMania song, I just don't. They usually go like the disturbed uh, flow rider route. Yeah, it's usually in the the flow rider vein, which isn't doesn't this count? Is this not flow no, right this adjacent? Is a, this is a little classier. Hmm. Like a little... Uh, I think more I music mean, snobs are are into The weekend than are into Flo Rida. It's your catchy pop music guy. 
Flo Rida had his moment in the sun. Now we got the weakened pit bull. Yeah. Yeah. No DJ Khaled, though. There was a streaker. Did you see the streaker? I didn't see it. I saw the I saw the cutaway from it. Yeah. And the reaction shots. I didn't actually see uh Mike run out on the field. It did look like our buddy Mike at that point the Chiefs uh wasn't looking good, so I think he had to get on the field and try to make an impact. He yes. was on the field for a while, this guy. Like the reaction shots, they're like, We'll cut to this guy again, I guess. Can we not tackle him? And then, you know, you see the fan footage, and sure is not sure enough, he's juking a couple of guys. One uh security guard, the first one, he make he goes to make a tackle, and the other guy, the the streaker, doesn't even see it coming. And you're thinking, Oh, he's about to get gored. But the security <laughs> guards, I don't know. He's like an Andy Reid type. He's a big fella. <laughs> Andy Reid extra type. LBs. Let's keep it on brand here. And he just, he just eats it. Like he almost fall. Like I think he was trying to get his footing for the tackle and then just kind of slips bad footing. I'm sure the chiefs will tell you all about it. Bad footing. Um, and then the next guy, when they actually make the tackle, the guy that makes the tackle got the worst of that. What are they doing? This is the Super Bowl. There's a sniper up there. I know there's snipers up there. We forgot about the ground level though. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have men on the ground. That that's sort of uh, shocking too in 2021 to not be able to stop a streaker at the Super Bowl seems a little. Uh, it seems a little like 1978 type shenanigans that yeah you couldn't get away like, at the Super Bowl. You're telling me you got away with this? We're not talking about like a random White Sox game in June where some mulleted family strolls out onto the field. I mean, we're talking about the Super Bowl. The game. You would think they had that all uh, situated, but he was doing like tag team maneuvers out there, huh? Like headbutting two guys together, hopping over them. <laughs> yeah, he was. It was a Three Stooges bet. He was just follow my hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a. It was a hell of a thing. And he wasn't a real streaker. He had like a one onesie sort of singlet on. Apparently, it, <laughs> he was even better for some reason. <laughs> he was sent out there. Some YouTube prankster, some YouTube millionaire kid sent this guy out there as like advertising for his adult site. I don't know. It's like a porno plug or something. And so that's what that was, because even our streakers can't be pure. It's no. got to be. It's got to be some gimmick advertising. It's hard Thing. out there. You got to make some money. You got to make those dollars these days. The best is when, so the streaker's out there, takes about what feels like 45 minutes. And so the streaker hits and they're cutting the guys. They cut to Tom Brady and Tom Brady's like, he stands up and he starts walking around a little uncomfortably. He's just like, you ain't going to get me. <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> he's got his eyes, he's got his head on a swivel. He's looking around. He's Better. like, I got, okay. Dimebag Daryl, somebody else today, because I'll kill you. And he had that in him, too. Tom Brady was getting at people. He was tripping with uh, Mateo Mathau. Walter there. Mathau's kid, yeah. Yeah, and I can't wait for that to come out, because that audio is going to come out. He's like, well, Tom Brady said something pretty unacceptable, and I never really saw that side of him. So they'll have that out, unless it was really bad, then the NFL will never let us <laughs> ever, ever hear that. Oh, yeah. um, what we think if he like if he drops an end bomb or something? There's no way you're dropping an end bomb in the Super Bowl. No, right, right, right. There's no because you have a team of people that are mostly black that are on your team, and you so you wouldn't want to say that. Even if let's say hypothetically you are Trump's best friend, and it pops into your brain to say it. Um, yeah, you you just don't. You wouldn't. Why would you say that? You don't want to do that. See, and that's that's also a thing that people wanted to highlight after the Super Bowl. Not really before the Super Bowl, but afterwards. Like he won, he got a seventh ring. By the way, don't forget he's a Trump guy. And I didn't really know that to begin with. Didn't really care. Um, but if that's the case, then yeah, I don't I don't like Tom Brady. Just like with Brett Favre. Brett Favre's dead to me. Tom Brady. Well Tom I'm sure he's he's gonna be mad losing me, but Tom Brady's Tom. hilarious because he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not a Trump guy. I'm not a Trump supporter. He's like, he's my best friend is all. But I don't, it doesn't mean I support him politically. <laughs> We're just best friends and hang out all the time and we enjoy each other's company. That doesn't mean I'm, I'm a guy. Yeah. I'm a, not a Trump guy. 
do you agree with everything your best friend does? Yeah. When your best friend is also a billionaire and becomes president, um, I mean, does that mean you agree with everything? I mean, do you vote? You're gonna not vote for your best friend? I mean, that's tricky. I mean, you got to, but it doesn't mean you support him. So I'm gonna make my prediction now, February eighth, twenty twenty one. We are going to have some sort of revelation oh, with Tom good. Brady at some point. There's going to be a Jeffrey Epstein situation. Ooh. There's going to be something pretty dark. There's going to be, I don't know, some weird sweatshop thing that he was in, you know, not just funding, but like cracking the whip. <laughs> like he's, I have a feeling there's going to be some skeletons in the Tom Brady closet next to all his Super Bowl rings. It's well, uh, Walter Mathau Jr., what's his name? Taran Mathau. How do you say it? Matthew? I think it might be Matthew. He claims Tom Brady called me something I won't repeat. And then he deleted the tweet. He should he fucking that. repeat it. Right. <laughs> right. It was this passive aggressive vague tweeting. Yeah, I feel like I hate social media. I, I feel it. like if he said if he did call him something like that, um, you would just say that he did because there'd be proof to back you up. Whereas if yeah. you lie about that and then delete your tweet, because you know, they could go check the tapes and you'd probably hear what he said. And it's nothing. Yeah. And you win. Why do you delete if... the tweet? If you're not lying, because, because we all know you can't really delete a tweet. As soon as it's been out there, it's vaulted on the internet. It's on Reddit. Because that's the forever. look he was going for, that he was he was mad, he was speaking from the heart, but then, you know, he came to his senses and tried to do the mature, responsible thing. So it's not just the tweet, it's the whole narrative of the actions of the tweet. Right. When you when you delete something is very important. People look at that. And so I'm sure that's all it was. But yeah, if he said the N-word or something, he would have led with that. Yeah. Because you, you win. You've won that battle. He, he said the N-word. I, and you, it, instant sympathy. You know, anything... Sure. Sure. So I, I'm. If so, it's probably not going to be anything like that. Um. Other. Uh, so he if that's me the case, a fucking loser. Yeah. It's like you like... look. You look like a soft little baby. Then if it's not something like that, then you look bad. I. You just said something. I would never repeat what it, with the c word. Which like what? what yeah. Did, yeah. Did he call you an artard? What did What did he do? Yeah. Also, don't lie. If he calls you, uh, you know the f. The F word or uh, a cunt. I bet he. I bet you, he called. I bet he called him. A, have said those. My prediction for this. A lot of predictions on this episode. Um, I'm gonna go with bitch. He called because guys don't like that. Mm -mm. Like NFL athletes, just athletes in general. That like for some reason that's a word for them. That them's fighting words. Oh yeah, definitely. And it's like I mean, there's a lot of words that shouldn't shouldn't be, but for whatever reason, that's the one that you don't say that. So I'm sure it was that one. And he's like, "What did yeah. you say to me?" I'll... And then he realizes he said it 14 times since he tweeted that. And he's like, "I guess I gotta delete that because I repeated it." Mm -hmm. Don't be mm -hmm. full of shit in your tweet either. He called me a a loser bitch, and I just would never call someone that. And then someone never pulls seen up. that side of 16 them. times you called someone a loser bitch. Yeah. They're professional athletes competing in the Super Bowl. I get it. I do like the, the, the piece. I didn't get it what that was while it happened. And then I saw the tweets today where I guess the Chiefs player did that to the, to the Bucks player. Oh, the peace sign thing? Yeah, yeah I thought it was, was two. Cool. I thought he was like, that's twice I did this to you to if something. You know, I didn't know it was peace because he was aggressive. It didn't look like peace out. Like, cause usually when you do peace, it's like the back of the hand facing out, like peace, like peace, bro, peace out or whatever. But this was the front, like the palm side in his face, like two, two times. I did this to you two times today is what I was thinking. It's a little peace. Hey, look, he's a rookie. He's going to make his mistakes out there, Jim. So yeah, he flipped the wrist. Probably should have went the other way with it. But yeah, that, that player was given the peace sign earlier in the regular season and he got, he got a little, re got a little revenge. Oh, I love it. People try to do that. See, and that's different than the Aaron Rodgers belt. Aaron Rodgers scores a touchdown. Every like he'll hit you with the state farm belt. It's, yeah. it's a celebration. It's not really a taunt at you like a DX chop or something. Right. 
and but guys they get salty so and so if they sack rogers a lot of guys they'll do the belt and it's just like i guess if you want and then he'll throw a touchdown and then after the game he'll be like should have done that belt he's done that so many times shouldn't have done that belt that's my belt <laughs> wearing the strap is my game is he? A, is this like a more of a boxing thing, or is it a pro wrestling thing? Um, I think it's just a, a, it was a State Farm thing. Discount, double check, and the fat guy would do the belt thing, and then he did it in the game, which oh, I'm sure yeah, made yeah. State Farm see, just oh, see, I paint the walls white. I'm fucked up because I thought it started as him doing like the championship belt thing, and Ooh, then they and put they brought that it to in, State Farm. Like this is the means. This means discount, double check. And now I don't know what the what re- reality is. Now I've you been inceptioned twisted. too many times. I think it started with State Farm, though. Okay. Listeners, please correct me. Rogers, double check. I missed that. Send, send all corrections to corrections at notlikethis.podbean.com. Thank you. It is weird seeing uh, Tom <laughs> Brady win a Super Bowl not in a Patriots jersey. Am I going to yeah. see Rodgers in a different jersey toward the no. end? Like, nope. I don't know if I want to. I don't know what that's going to look like. I don't weird. think you. I don't, I don't think you will. I don't think you will. If for no other reason, he he saw what happened with Brett Favre. And granted, you could say, "Well, look what happened with with, with Tom Brady here." Uh, they're gonna they're gonna they're starting to build around Rodgers, which they should have been doing for a long time. Now they're just a couple pieces away. Really, they've already replaced their defensive coordinator. Thank you. Special teams coordinator is gone. Appreciated. Now I just need uh, Kevin King out of there, and I'm feeling pretty good. The new defensive coordinator was the defensive backs coach for the Rams, which is a really good unit. He was a highly sought-after guy. So I'm all about that, having him on board with the Packers defense. Let's get that secondary looking pretty good. Front seven's always looking pretty decent, but the secondary could use some work. So this is a good fit. Happy about that. Not happy that Aaron Rodgers is engaged to Shailene Woodley Whoa. because I just, I, this is no time for love. She still feels like a child to me because my wife what used was to she? watch the show. It was like called, uh, you know, hey, pregnant teenagers or something on Family Channel. Okay. And she played a kid in high school that got pregnant. Oh my! Uh, so I always still think of her as a kid, even though she, she was probably twenty four, playing a sixteen year old. Uh, but of course, she looked she looked like a kid. I bet she was actually a teenager on that show. So, and and, she, but that was, was that was like fifteen years ago. But I that's just how I always picture her. And I know Aaron yeah. Rodgers was older than me, so it's just weird for me. That oh, he's just Robin, Robin. I almost said grave, Robin, Robin the cradle, the cradle of pay Paul. <laughs> Wait, that's that too. <laughs> But she was in the uh, neurodivergent yeah. movies. I think she was the lead. <laughs> yes, she was. And they didn't even make, they didn't even finish them. Oh, like, we did they really? No, they, they didn't even. I don't even think they finished them. They were supposed to do like a double, a double. They always do the two parter at the end. Yeah, like a little Harry Potter. And I think the, the second one lost money, and they're like, yeah, yeah, we're done. Let's see, wow, neurodivergent. Damn. Yeah, it's. Uh, they're like, we'll wrap this up as a web series. We'll. We'll get closure. Don't worry. Yeah, twenty. the The book came out twenty eleven, twenty fourteen. The first movie comes out. Um. Uh, cost eighty five million. Made two hundred eighty eight million. Eighty five is a lot. Yeah, but it made uh, almost three hundred. So, not bad. But then they uh. They made another one, and I. <laughs> I think. That's where they went wrong. So. uh the second one cost 110 million. No, no, that made almost 300 million. Made even more, but it cost a little more. Maybe I'm wrong. Did they release the third one? Yeah, the third one. I don't even know about. See, they did it. Yeah, third one. Uh, yeah, third one. They took a hit there. Third one cost between 110 and 142. I don't know how you lose 32 million dollars in your accounting. But so let's say it cost 120 and it made 179. So it made like almost half as much, a little bit more than half that the first two made. Well, but I don't know. And she's really, so I don't know much about her. I didn't watch those shows. I didn't watch those teenage girl movies or the books for obvious reasons. 
So I hear Aaron Rodgers, Shailene Woodley, and I go, yeah. all right, here we go again. He was doing so well, his spirit journeys, he's just shrooming up and then having a, a MVP year, by the way, MVP, uh, Aaron Rodgers. That's what yeah. you get because instead of Super Bowl. Uh, yes. Yeah. So the and, Walter Payton Man of the Year Award always goes to somebody that doesn't get any other awards that count for stuff. Right. So uh, Russell Wilson got that this year. So Ooh. he he avoided that one. He got MVP. That's that's a that's a big one. That's a good one to have. I don't know if Rodgers would get the Walter Payton Man. He doesn't do anything. It's like for filming 18 commercials this year, Aaron, we're we award you the Walter Sorry, Payton. I, I just win and make money. Uh, yeah, so I guess it had terrible reviews, the last one. And the, you know what? Wikipedia is, is working me here because they're showing me the worldwide. So it made $113 million in other countries and $60 million here, and it cost $142 million. So not great. It, in opening I weekend, guess. it made $2.3 million in America. Next, next time this, these movies are on TBS2. I'm going to watch them because I want to see where this money goes. Why is your movie so expensive? Because I'm sure it looks like garbage. Like any of them that aren't Harry Potter, right. they just look bad. Yeah, it was 46% behind the first one and 44% behind the opening weekend of the second one. So I uh, just, you know, shit the bed. Mm -hmm. It's not bed. Shailene's fault. She was great. So I, I Google her. I'm like, Who's, who is this that's ruining my chances of my team winning next year? And she's really charming. She's very pretty. She's a beautiful woman. Yeah. And very. she does really well on these talk shows because she's quick. You know, she's witty. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, this chick's awesome, actually. I, she I like got her. cut out of a Spider-Man movie. Oh. She was supposed to be in the Andrew Garfield uh, Spider-Mans, the Amazing Spider-Mans. Hmm. She was supposed to be in the second one as Venom. No, I think like Mary Jane. Damn. And the 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 scene got filmed and was cut out, and then that movie sucked, and then they never made another one. So, whew. good lord, it was so bad they just started refilming it. I love yeah, hearing basically, those stories. I love that. I, I love it. Go for it. Get the fuck out of here. Throw it in the trash. That another can. one they did that besides Back to the Future, we all know Back to the Future one. Um, was, who fray, who framed Roger Rabbit? Didn't they go with somebody else that wasn't Bob Hoskins at first? And they're like, this isn't working. Did they just shit can a Roger Rabbit movie? I think so. Like they were just like, I know we've been filming this for a month, guys. Oh, oh I see what you're saying. But we're gonna start again. <laughs> okay, you're speed. talking about actors uh, that were recast in the movie. I thought you were talking yeah. about like additional sequels that just don't come out because the one before it sucked. No, just So like when you a, said Back to the Future, I was a little taken aback. But you're talking about the Eric Stoltz. Eric Stoltz. Uh, and then they were, yeah, Biff thought he was getting fired because he's like, well, I already shot like all this stuff yeah. with him and I'm in that, so I'm probably gone too. Oh, think, who did uh, they who have framed? instead of Bob Hoskins? That's interesting. I, um... Don't look too deep into it because I might be misremembering. No, so just no. enjoy that brain fantasy. That that makes sense now that I know what we're talking about. I still thought we were talking about like a sequel to that, that they were going to have someone else in or something. Who framed Roger again? Yeah, it is it's weird. The baby, I, I th think it's weird that they didn't do more with that. Did they end up having a cartoon or something? I mean, that was a. I don't think so. It's a big movie. It was probably very, very difficult to do. When they were done, they were like, never again. <laughs> this yeah. was a hassle. Licensing, trying to line all that up. So those two guys are on the screen at the same amount of time. <laughs> oh, Jesus, fuck it. We'll just make regular movies. I'm trying to think. Uh, I don't know Brendan if this Fraser is... Brendan Fraser will do it again. This isn't a good poll, really, but Jean-Claude Van Damme was the Predator monster. That counts. And I think they did some, sh either some screen tests or like some actual sh shots. And they're like, mm -hmm. he's just too, you're not big, like you're real flexible and stuff, but we just need a guy to look big in the suit, bigger than Arnold. And he's not a big dude. Like he's not very tall. He's not tiny. He's not like Sly Stallone. He's not like a midget, but he, uh, 
he just wasn't big enough, so they went with Pete. What's his name? Peter something something. I don't know. They went with the guy Griffin. Kevin Kevin Hall Anthony Michael Kevin Richardson. I don't know. They went with the guy that that we know and love today. But yeah, that was like he was still teaching karate in in Belgium at the time. And apparently making a shit ton of money. Like he had several karate studios and was making a ton of dough, but wanted to be an actor. So he made like three movies for $14. He did it. It was like Cyborg, Bloodsport, and like Kickboxer or something. It was like all three of them. They're like, we'll give you $5,000. He's like, whatever. Fuck, yes. I got to be in movies. I'll do it. What's that one movie that he did? The Village, the temple it's like a fighting movie of course it is yeah i think it's, it's called the temple the temple it might have been the temple so this is uh, it's one of my favorite trauma stories because they would go to like the Cannes film festival every year in like france or wherever, wherever it is belgium something and obviously that's jean claude's you know area essentially and it was time for the village. So they were going to show it at Cannes, and he was going to do a thing it was you know his big moment and he was going to do this thing where he was going to approach via boat uh, on this dock, and there was going to be like a little press junket sort of thing, and it was going to be just a little publicity stunt, uh, except for the trauma team <laughs> were there. <laughs> <laughs> and so the boat comes up. I think it's just like the boat driver and Jean-Claude, and he's got his foot up like the Captain Morgan guy, and he's just triumphant. And then it's just all these weirdos like cheering and jeering and being like, hey, it, what about this controversial thing that you're related to? Cause he's got skeletons in his closet and he gets in that boat and they drive away. <laughs> Peace. And there is footage of it. Cause it's on one of their documentaries and it is hilarious. They just kind of troll Jean-Claude Van Damme at his big moment. Oh my God. <laughs> in, in I, I watched a, and then watched, what am I? I'm a fucking idiot. I'm an idiot. I read an article about, the Friends Super Bowl episode, which I had forgotten was a Super Bowl episode. I'm sure I watched it live because I watched Friends back then because I was really lame. But it was the 96 Super Bowl, so 95 season. It was the Stillers and the Cowboys. And after the Super Bowl, they aired like a special episode of Friends, and it was an hour long. And maybe it was longer than that. I don't know. But that was the one with Jean-Claude Van Damme where they like go on a movie set and he's filming a movie and uh, Rachel and Monica are fighting over Jean-Claude Van Damme. And every like Mm. everyone's story about it was like, oh, Brooke Shields was amazing. We didn't know she could be funny. Uh, Julia Roberts was, was so cool that she did it. And Matthew Perry had to send her all these faxes and like answer quiz questions. It was very cute. And then they started dating and then they get to the Jean-Claude Van Damme stuff. And they're like, he was harder to work with than the monkey. Uh, And the monkeys are really hard to work with, but he showed up late every day and went straight to his trailer and didn't know any of his lines and was a complete piece of shit. And Mm. every time he had a kissing scene, he would stick his tongue down their throats and uh, French kiss. That's what he knows. So, uh, like Courtney Cox language thing. and Jennifer Aniston both went to the producer, like, can you tell Jean Claude that to not put his tongue in my mouth when we do the kissing scenes? And they tried to like pad it when they presented it to him, like, uh, Jean Claude, we know you're used to uh, movie pictures where it's very up close and intense and you have to see that tongue in there, but on television shows, we don't really don't need the tongue in the mouth. So, uh, stop, uh, mouth raping our actors. Stop that, please. Stop that. Did he? Uh, I don't think so. He's, I think he's on uh, Cameo. Yeah, I don't think he did. I don't think he did. Uh, which CBD? What a piece of shit. So uh, Rob, Roger Rabbit was going to be like a whole different thing, and it took like five years for them to get started on it. But originally, uh, Paul Rubens was going to be the voice of Roger Rabbit. I could I could see that. I could hear that. And I like who we got though. Peter, I don't even know how to say his last name. Renaday? Mhm. Yeah, he uh he was supposed to be Eddie Valiant. 
and uh, that's it. I don't know any. He was in Bay Bay's Kids. He played the announcer. I don't. (laughs) Maybe he was supposed to be animated too. Looks like he had a lot of voice lines, like a voice over roles. That guy. So maybe everyone. Maybe it was supposed to be an animated thing, and they decided to make it cross cross the boundaries or something. Yeah, Steven Spielberg. Like, well, you'll get these rights. We'll get these rights. Uh, why don't you lend your characters to this movie? It'll be good publicity for Betty Boop and whatnot. And we'll do the best we can with the technology. It'll be mastered later by the greatest artist of the century, Brendan Fraser, in Looney Tunes. It's coming back. Oh, he's man. coming back. And HBO Max has all the Mummy Collection movies. Oh, oh I know what's I know what's <laughs> happening for Patreon. Let us know what movies you want besides the mummy besides movies. The, yeah, besides the mummy. Uh, so in f- eight months, let us know what you want to squeeze. Is, does the Scorpion King count? Is that in there? Yeah. Yeah. They do have it in the mix. That's the worst CGI. I oh, can't yeah. Oh, man. Even then, at that time, we were like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> what is this? What am I looking at here? And it was like the big moment. Like, this is when The Rock becomes the scorpion oh god oh no <laughs> oh there was bad cgi movies in the late 90s too where they just they went hard like they went full hard into the paint f- for the cgi even though it wasn't ready for prime time um, even the, even the star wars prequels are starting to show some signs yeah and those looked good for the time but i remember thinking like a little cartoony, some of those shots are a little cartoony. Yeah, just some of the weird Looney Tunes faces that Jar Jar makes when he's getting strangled and shit. Well, not even that, but yes, definitely that as well. <laughs> some of like the vehicle stuff. It's oh, little, yeah. A little too cartoony at times. Not great. But we shall see. But you have, to, you have to have those pioneers. You do? Um, there is... I don't know if there was talk, but for some reason it was a discussion on the internet. Oh, that's why, because there's some WandaVision spoilers that I won't get into. Um, But the people, the internet was like, hey, since Disney owns Marvel, Disney owns Star Wars, what do you say? Cross those over a little bit. And Marvel, Fag or whatnot, was like, nah, we're not really interested in that right now. And I was like, oh, thank God. (laughs) Thank you, Lord. How does, how would you even, it's, okay, let me back up a little bit. They'll figure it out. James Gunn will figure that out. Too My sweet. childhood, 9, 10, probably 8, 9, 10, all I wanted was an X-Men movie, an Avengers movie, one of these big ensemble movies yeah. with all the characters, and it seemed like for a while that was never going to happen in any form that was entertaining or good. I mean, X-Men made a lot of money, and it was like, it sort of was like, that's what we got. This is all we got. So I guess this is the best of what we have right now. And then uh, Marvel, like, knocked it out of the park. And they did. They went way deeper than I thought would ever happen in a movie universe, you know, in terms of the setup was like five movies long, and then you got the payoff, and then more setup for the second. Like, they, they definitely strangled that golden goose yeah and then i I complained about it on the show that they're all kind of decent and some of them are really good and that's boring to me that none of them are just complete dog shit unwatchable pieces of shit because those are fun they're all the same yeah like there's not like oh like temple of doom sure it's an indiana jones movie but it's like this bastard child that's a little bit different yeah the the first movies don't really have that the furthest away you get is like Guardians of the Galaxy. And even that is sure feels like it fits. And then you, like Ant Man is very comedy driven. Like the Winter Soldier is like a spy movie. That's the only one that kind of isn't your standard superhero. Yeah. Yeah. Film. There's no space aliens and shit. Um, but, but yeah, they're all kind of the same. And I'm like, well, they did a great job. 
well, what would nine year old me want? What if Darth Vader could fight Captain America? No, no, Jim, no, you don't want that. Stop yourself right there. Why not? You're just going to, it's just, come on, ruin everything. Look, we're here for a good time, not a long time. Let's just mess around with some stuff. Sure, it might be dog shit, but we can just sweep that under the rug like they do with some of these other movies, pretend they don't exist. You know what would be cooler is if instead of a Star Wars crossing over with Marvel, which with... And let's just go with Guardians of the Galaxy, because that's the only way I can actually see that making a little sense. Obviously, Doctor Strange will make some things happen and, you know, ripping of... you know, Sure. Yeah. But yeah, they, they did some Space things. Guys, the Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy. Yeah, the, the Space Guys, the, the, the Infinity Stones make basically anything possible type of thing. So that would... You could. Ex- I'm not saying you couldn't write it where it would make sense. It's just don't. Then what? Everything is just one big ass movie. Here's what I, I want. I like when things are kind of built in the same universe. They don't have to cross over, but just like it, like in Halloween 2018, we saw the kids with the silver shamrock masks. That was it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's all I needed. It's like oh, same universe. Thank you. You know what? Me, like I did get a little sad though during Endgame. Um, I mean, you, you do got that daredevil show, you know, Jessica Jones, that whole crew to, to yeah, I forgot about have, those. give me four seconds of daredevil in one of those movies. I would have been like a little kid. That would have been cool. And, and it would have made some, tons of sense. What? You could have worked him in there. Something with him and Spider-Man, you know, that they were daredevil always crossing in the over. Avengers movies. Yeah. I didn't know he was Marvel. Yeah. He's, he's Marvel. He's guy. I don't know. Yeah, he's Marvel, and like that was Marvel's Netflix foray was the Daredevil spun off into Punisher and yeah. Luke Cage and all that. They like did a little mini Avengers thing on Netflix that, for a while. That goose, that silver goose, they strangled to fucking death. Yeah, They're like it, yeah. It, it, you like this Daredevil? Well, he's got an uncle, and here's one about his shoes. All right. Yeah, but you could have worked him in in New York. He's in New York. Spider Man's in New York. Could have given. Give him a little bit. Maybe give me a little Hugh Jackman as Wolverines. Loan him out, Fox. Loan him out for just, for the, just for the portal thing at the end. Have him pop out of a circle. Arr, with his claws. I'd have came. But don't I do, put I, Darth I, Vader in it. Yeah, that's a bit much. Like, I do stuff like that with the horror things I write. A lot of them will take place in Warren County. And to 99.9% of people, they're like, all right, nice fictional name. I'm like, yeah, yeah that's where Haddonfield is, though. Right. I'm just like, is it the same universe? Is Michael Myers down the street? We'll find out. I don't know. That's up to you. What's that check? How many zeros are on that check? Mm -hmm. You can write whoever you want in this. (laughs) It's cool. It's a cool idea. But what would be cool? I'd be on board if it was some sort of crazy multiverse movie where it's like Star Wars and Batman and the Avengers and Back to the Future and Indiana Jones. You know, some kind of like crazy, like last action hero. We're in and out of all the movie universes, and that's the shtick. I could be more on board with it than just crossing over Star Wars and Guardians of the Galaxy. I like. I'm. We're just gonna call it that from now on. We're not gonna say Marvel, Star Wars, and Guardians of the Galaxy. We're gonna make the one that makes the most sense. God, just force wouldn't, it. You wouldn't even gonna... be able to do it anymore because what I would want to see would be the Guardians of the Galaxy guys and Han Solo and guys, but Hans, he might not be around with us. I don't want to spoil anything. Uh, so you can't really do that. Like to me, that's the wet dream. Are those, are... Spoilers. He dies in a movie that came out five years ago. People get hot. But spoilers. I haven't watched it yet. The fuck Give me you. Chris Pratt and. Who plays Han Solo? Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford. That would have been amazing. Get off my shit. But now he's too old. Now he's too old. Unless it's like a prequel and it's before he dies. It's like, I'm on my way to find my son, Ben. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. I know. (laughs) I know it is. Yeah, that's too. It's too crazy. Uh, what I want is for Disney to then to to buy DC from Warner Brothers, and then give me some 
that Marvel level quality in some DC movies. Cause this, this is well-worn territory on not like this. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to go down this rabbit hole, but uh, it'd be cool if one time before I die, I can see a new Superman movie at the theater. That's good. Doesn't have to be great. Doesn't have to be an A plus plus movie. Can it be a B minus? Can it be a B? So give me something before I die. Get the spirit up there. Get the Superman, not dark Superman, broody Superman. What if they gave you that uh, Red Sun? What if they gave you Russian Superman? And it was a really good movie. Would you? I, even I would count it. I'd appreciate that it was a really good movie. But I, but I feel like even their really good movies always, when we watch them more. They suddenly don't seem as good anymore. Like the, theirs don't hold up. Mm. Shots fired. Dark Shots, Knight. Yeah. Shots just, just yeah. Dark Knight sucks. Since Batman begins. More like Batman ends right here. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> Dark Knight Rises is the worst one of the of that. With that. Well, sure. I mean, they. You watch it at the first time at two in the morning. You're a little punch drunk at the end. You're like, oh. Yeah, it was pretty good. And then you see it the next day, and you're like, ah, it was all right. And then you see it a couple, five more times. You're like, God damn, why do you, why does anyone ever want to watch this? Oh, Catwoman's hot? Okay. They get some of the spirit. Oh, yeah, that's where they, they get some of the surface things, right? They're like, all right, Bane's going to break his back. And I'm like, okay, I heard he breaks his back in it. That's great. And then you see it, and you're like, oh, they did it. They did it that way, though. Yeah. All right. I hear Catwoman's in it. And she's like a thief, like the comic books. That's great. That's awesome. That's what we need to, oh, they did it that way, though. Mm. Shoot. Yeah, a lot of a lot of things just don't work for me. Yeah, Robin's in it. We see Robin at the end. He's gonna let us know who he is. Oh God, it doesn't even make sense. Try my birth name, Robin. <laughs> like what? You just want to kill that? That's like some silver shamrock. Like I know how to kill all the comic book nerds at once with a massive heart attack. We're gonna have him say his real name's Robin at the end, and it it never was, and it makes no sense. That's when I was fucking Superman. I was like, why did you say that name? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Is it, can you imagine, like, you're watching some, uh, like, some guy that's known for making movies that people think are good until they see him a couple times. So Ooh. you're watching this movie, and you're like, oh, man, this, this movie's great. And it's about the Punisher, but he's not the Punisher for the whole movie. He just plays this guy named Ted. And at the end, instead of saying, try my real name, Frank Castle, he's like, do you want to try on my real name? The Punisher. It's uh, me. Yeah, that was a hell of a thing. It's me, Robin T. Ward. Ugh. <sighs> Christopher Nolan's going to need a, a bit of a comeback. Because his last couple movies, I saw Dunkirk in theaters. I heard that was in, good. In the long ago. It was good. It was it was It was fine. It wasn't. It didn't change anybody's life. And then we had uh, Tenant, Tenant, and I hear nothing but good ba- or bad things. I watched about the first half an hour. <laughs> you almost had us. I hear nothing but good. I'm sorry. Is that good? This I meant bad. I heard nothing but bad things about Tenant. <laughs> Accidental roast. Um, but I only got through about 30 minutes of that before I had to tap out. So I guess my opinion might not matter on that one since I didn't finish it. But he's gonna need to come. I think that's come through. That's even worse than if you watched the whole thing and said you didn't like it. You couldn't survive past thirty minutes. That means it's even worse. And I'm I'm what many would consider a Chris Nolan Mark. Like I'll go see all his movies, but I I would like them to be good. (laughs) And every one that I've seen gets worse each time I see it again. And I can't explain it. And I don't think it's just me being young and immature when I saw it the first time. Because it's like every movie that's come out since then. I I rewatch it and I'm like, who says, like, who says, who does that? None of this is making any sense. Then there'll be some cool, awesome sequence or, you know, action sequence or cool shot. And I'm like, yeah, he's really good at, at a lot of this. Until it gets to the part where it's like two humans just being human together. 
Then it's like I, I still like the dark night. It's like though. watching Vision fuck Vision or something. I don't know. Oh, we are we human? I don't know. Double, are you coming? Vision. What is coming? I don't know. Yeah, the, the Dark Knight's the best one. I think as like a comic book Ballsy. nerd, the Batman Begins is more fun for me to watch, but uh The Dark Knight is a is a better movie. But even I just I don't know. Let my boy John Carpenter make a DC movie. Oh yeah, who would he who would he make? Who could he make good? Batman? No. Some yeah. sort of loner that might have some humor to him. I'm sure there's plenty of options there. He yeah. probably could have done a good, like, before they did five of them. Like, uh, a movie about Wolverine. That probably could have been pretty good. Although, that's still Marvel, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I don't know where these guys are from. Yeah, it's Marvel. Who's Spawn? Who's who's Spawn from? That Where's was he at? so Todd McFarlane left Marvel oh and boy. started Image Comics with a bunch of other artists because they just wanted to own everything. And you know, they they were creating these characters and not making a ton of money off of the merchandise and royalties and stuff because Marvel owned them. So like, we're all gonna leave together in a big dick move and start our own comic book studio during the comic book '90s boom. When it was Image Comics, and Spawn was one of those. Hmm. And uh, they were cool. You know, but it is, know. it is like Jim Lee, uh, Todd McFarlane, I think Rob Liefeld. All the big name art and Rob Liefeld's art it was I mean, it was never good. But he was he was huge in terms of making up these characters and whatnot. Yeah, they all left in like 92 or 3 or something and started their own comic book line. And uh, that's huh. what spawns from. And then a bunch of other shit nobody remembers because it was all terrible. But they own it all. But they had Spawn. That's they, what yeah, they had Spawn. The Spawn HBO show, I, I remember being cool, but I haven't seen it since it was on HBO. So I, movie, I don't know. That was still good. The movie had Luigi. Yeah, it did. It's in some good. I mean, you're talking about '90s shitty special effects. I thought like the prosthetics and stuff were those were I cool. Lo- I love I love a fat suit though. I'm but do you remember sucker. like the big? Uh, what did they call the big demon in Spawn? It was like Azrael or a, a, a rat. I didn't even know what company that motherfucker is from, and you're gonna ask me who's the big bad. So well, you just told like, me the history like, of Image Comics, sir. I think you might have a better opportunity. It was like than the I quote. On, well, I don't. Azrael was like this this fill in Batman for a while, but it was something like <laughs> that. Um, and it was like it was essentially like the devil, but they didn't. He was like a big creature. It wasn't like, oh, I'm a, I'm a, a devious. Uh, I'm I'm Al Pacino, mm. you know. So it like that was CGI and looked terrible and there's like the whole I think like a sequence in the beginning where he's like going to hell and it looks like you're playing a video game from 1994. Sure you're not talking about the South Park movie when Kenny dies? Yeah, it looks worse than that. What? Yeah. <laughs> it does looks terrible. Craziness. That's why I got to see this Divergent again cuz it's like where'd that 85 million go? I want to see every penny. On that screen. Male Bolgia. Male, male Bolgia is the supervillain. Male is, Bulge? Male, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. M-A-L-E-B-O-L-G-I-A. I know what you're doing, you fucking 13-year-old ass. Uh, the male yeah. Bulge. Yeah. He is With the... O, though. He's one of the rulers of hell. So they, it's like a... You know, He's like a, a hell where hell. there's no "quote unquote" Satan, but there's there are like demons that you got to have the Dukes, man. It's all about the Dukes. So yeah, I that got, I got a movie shitty. about the Dukes. I got a movie about a Duke. Don't sleep on them; they're dangerous. So the um, speaking of things that I know what you're doing, I I hadn't seen this since pro- I was probably a little kid until today, but Ooh. I started listening to. Uh, one of the Bruce Pritchard podcasts, and it was Royal Rumble 91. You know, 30 years ago, it was Royal Rumble season. We were talking about Royal Rumbles uh, last week, I think, or two weeks ago. 
And uh, for it. I started watching it because it got really good reviews at the time. And it was like the biggest pay-per-view that they had since WrestleMania six until like WrestleMania 14 or something in terms of buys, which I was shocked to hear that. But uh, so I started watching it and like the rockers match is good. Um, it's a cool, you don't like tag matches, but it does all the tag shit and fucking, there are times where Shawn Michaels looks like he's blown up, but there are times oh. where he does some crazy awesome bumps that are just like perfectly timed and look great. It was cool. And then the, I, I didn't even get close to finishing watching the pay-per-view, but there's this part where Macho King Randy Savage is going to have uh, Queen Sherry convince the Ultimate Warrior to accept a challenge if he wins. Uh, you know, if, if Ultimate Warrior retains his title at the pay-per-view, will he accept Macho Man's number one contender status challenge? So she's out there talking to Mean Gene in front of the crowd, and uh, Macho Man's watching backstage on a monitor. And then Ultimate Warrior comes out, and everyone pops. Oh yeah! And he's out there in his jacket, and, and she gets on her knees. She so she starts like like, will you accept? And then she's like, your wonderful hazel eyes. She starts like rubbing him down, pulling his jacket off, and your chest. I just want to touch your chest, and she touches him. She gets down on her knees, and her head is like six inches away from his cock, and the. The crowd is going crazy because a lot of them understand what's happening. I hadn't seen this, though, probably since I was, like, seven. You know? Yeah. And she's down on her knees. I'm like, God damn her head. I'm like, is she going to touch his ass cheek or something? Like, what is about to Is she going <laughs> to cup his balls? What am I about to see? And then they cut to a shot where it's, like, three quarters below, you know, like like, from below, looking up at her right by his crotch yeah. and i'm like can you like can you be, imagine vince on the in your head's like oh pal look at that she's gonna suck his cock like what? <laughs> kevin that's a great angle get lower right, that's right. what was happening everyone talks about the attitude era and all the the pornography that they were showing us on television and this is like when it's goody two shoes, good guys, bad guys, crazy, zany characters, and she's down there like, I'll suck your cock for this title. Please, <laughs> warrior. Do it for me, warrior. Yeah, I'm mm. down here. Do it. Get it all over me. Because like, I was like, what? what is the... There's got to be a part of this that pushes it too far that I don't remember. And it didn't happen. It didn't happen. But I'm like, God damn, what are you doing? You just had him. You just had uh, him sucking off Hogan or whatever at the WrestleMania 6. Or is it the other way? Is Hogan sucking him off? I don't know. It's like one of the most famous gifts that you ever see. It's it, They're doing the test of strength, test and it clearly strength. looks like yeah. one of them's sucking the other one off. I'm pretty sure Hogan's the one getting blown. Yes, yeah. I, I think That's how I remember it, too. And, and I don't know, this old Jim Helwig's like, look, we got to have something where I'm looking like I'm getting blown or I quit. But not one of these guys. Yeah, yeah, I'm not a queer or anything. Don't get me started. I know Hulk Hogan really likes it when I'm down there, but I would like a female to be down there, if you know what I mean, or I quit. And she does all this stuff. And then he just like gets in her face like he's having a seizure and just screams no. And then sp like he spits on the ground and like screams no in her face. Yeah. And everyone pops for it. Yeah, and then he, he pounds something. his chest. Yeah. And everyone pops even harder. That crowd was just ready to pop all night, man. Sim simpler times. Barbarian versus Big Boss Man. Like, oh God, that's gonna be a, a snooze fest. They were they were popping for fucking Big Boss Man like it was Hogan. Now that's ninety like ninety three boss man. That's prime boss man. Ninety one. That's, that's you know night stick doing the cool. Yeah, that was that was like right after he turned baby face and he lost a ton of weight. You know he didn't have the big gut like oh, hanging wow. over. Yeah, he was like yeah. slim and trim at this point as far as boss man can get. And uh, yeah, everyone was going crazy for boss man. Corrections oh. officer. He's not a cop, guys. Right. Doing hard time. Had a stick. 
But yeah, it's she's down there. I'm like, oh my goodness, great. Why don't I hear about this more or see it on Instagram more or whatever, you know? You think it's, sure it's too on ground. the nose and they only like the accidental ones? I think it's because for about two minutes straight, she just shouts, do it for me, warrior. <laughs> do it for me, warrior. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you got any other lines? <laughs> do it for <laughs> me, warrior. <laughs> Shit. Doesn't you have to have sound though? Just put her show her <laughs> that, going out. And they go nuts. And I'm looking, I'm like, those guys are adults. Those guys are teenagers. Like, I know why they're jumping up and down right now. <laughs> she got down there. Oh. I'm sorry I missed it. I only caught it on the first go round. That was a weird time, Desert Storm. Do you remember uh because that was like the whole angle they were going for. He had the USA warrior shit on. Yeah, and it was ugly. It was ugly. And then big uh, Sergeant Slaughter, this big fat jaw, was, uh, was a bad guy. And then he, he like sided with the Iraqis back when it was just like an interesting thing you hear about on the news. But they rode that shit all the way out till it was a war. That did, uh, didn't age well. But fucking Desert Storm... They used to have trading cards. They used to have Desert Storm military trading cards. And I bought the shit out of those as a kid. Wrestling cards or no, no, military Desert cards? Desert Storm military. Like who? Like generals? Yeah. Th- I had Mrs. A, Lieutenant Commander. I had, a Harry Schwarzkopf, Smith. I had a General Schwarzkopf card. I think there was a General oh Colin Powell card. I had a, uh, like, you know, the tanks and the planes and shit. And then each pack of cards would come with a sticker of a flag of one of the countries involved in the conflict. So I had like a flag of Kuwait and a flag of Saudi Arabia and a flag of Iraq and the United States. I popped when I got the United States one, you know, of course that's uh, it's your home team. That's like getting a, you know, white Sox, white Sox (laughs) player in your baseball card pack. I'm like, Oh, I'm from here. You should get those graded. I honestly, as a kid, was buying them because I swore, like, well, these are going to be worth money. This is a war. These are war cards. It's history in my hand. Yeah. It's like, what if I had World War II base, like trading cards of World War II now? They'd be worth a ton of money. I'm going to buy I a got, ton of these. I've got a Hitler. And they just sat in a shoebox. Shoebox got thrown away. Yeah, Whoops. I'm sure they're worthless. Don't eBay it. Don't do this to yourself. I'm doing Don't find it out. right no. now, live on the show. <laughs> oh, no. Gulf War trading cards. What were they called? Triumphs and Horrors of the Gulf War. No, that's not what they were called. No, yeah, Desert Storm. Yeah, Desert Storm cards. I had the other one, uh, Trollops and Horrors. <laughs> that, that's the set I so would get. So here's how worthless they are. Unopened packs of like magic cards that are out of print go for thousands of dollars. You can buy 33 packs of these cards unopened for $30. Oh. Uh, but man, looking well, at the looking at the the um the wrapper just brings me back. And I remember everyone telling me I was stupid then like these are not, these are going to be worthless and they're worth less now than they cost new when I got them. Which I guess that makes me even dumber. Gotcha. Than everyone Sometimes, thought. You can't win them all. You can't win them all. Or, you took a shot. Or any. You of said them. this Bitcoin. You know, I don't know what this Bitcoin thing might take off. You, you, you don't know. No. God, here's a lot of three boxes oh. of them for fifteen dollars. Three boxes of packs of cards for fifteen dollars. That means there's not one card in there worth anything, because you'll get that card in that lot of three boxes of cards you know what i mean yeah you know if there was some that's that's why the magic cards are are worth so much money because you could have like a black lotus in that pack of cards or something or i think maybe those are all accounted for but there are some cards that are still in unopened packs of magic cards that are worth tens of thousands of dollars and if you have an unopened pack there's a chance it's in there so that unopened pack is worth a lot of money Shit. All of these unopened packs are worthless, which means nothing in there could possibly be worth any more, unless it's like a piece of George Bush's face is in one of them or something. Well, that's good for you, because if it was the other way, you'd be very upset. 
Like, hey, these cars is worth twelve thousand dollars. Yeah. Son of a bitch. That's true. That's true. I would. I would. And Absolutely. I enjoyed them at the time, so I didn't lose money. There you go. Oh, it was a fun thing you did as a kid. But as a kid, I, I legit thought they were going to be worth money. How you did not end up in the military. <sighs> Jesus. It was a uh, little, little white kid with a shaved head, military cards. It was Ooh. pretty easy because then I found out you can die over there. And I, didn't, I, don't, I still don't want to do that. I, st- I still don't want to die. So, you know, pretty easy choice. It's fine. You're not a patriot. That's going to do it for this episode here. Oh, Check out our, oh. <laughs> our patreon.com slash not like this. If you're a patriot, you'll check it out. And check out facebook.com slash not like this podcast. That's where I post these episodes. I don't think there's any accompanying videos to be had here. Try to find that Jean-Claude Van Damme uh, Kane's video. I couldn't find it. So you have to get the trauma documentary, which I doubt anybody's going to do. (laughs) Otherwise, that's going to do it here for episode 162. Thanks for listening. I'm Shailene Woodley. I'm Sensational Sherry. Do it for me, warrior.